All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a Transport Fever 2 preview of the map editor. My goal here is to quickly step through the map editor and show all the different tools and how you can make your own maps in game now. You don't need to use any external tools to do this. So let's get right into it. So you can access the map editor right from the main screen here. Click on it. I'm going to choose temperate USA for the vehicles. This also chooses USA for the town names. Here's the different map sizes. I'm going to pick small. Here's the different map formats. Very similar to Transport Fever. And for the seed, I'm going to put in Tolacram here. You'll see why this seed or how the seed is going to be used when I get into the editor itself. You can also choose custom settings. And for this, I don't know the significance of the mods, but you can change these a little more detailed with these. Like the, you can vary the climate and the environment. You can vary the vehicles so you could have European town names and American vehicles, etc. There are a lot of different town names available. You can see this list here. Um, as far as vehicles go, there's all Asian, European, American. And for the environments, you have dry, temperate, tropical. For both the climate and the environments, I'm not going to use custom here. I'm just going to get back and we'll get going here. All right, you start out with basically a blank sheet of paper here. Uh, if you look closely, uh, you'll notice there's some birds, occasional bear, and what looks like an elk here and there. Here's one of them, here's one of them right here. Let's zoom in. Uh, so while we're looking at uh, Mr. Bear, be careful, something mysterious. Let's uh, set up the options before I get going here. So one of the really neat things with Transport Fever 2 is the date system. You can change the date speed. Now, I'm going to fix it on a date. What this means is, unlike Transport Fever, you can, have, you can run on the same day for your entire game and still build out all your infrastructure, but everything changes the same. It's the same with the map. So I'm going to set the map here to uh, 1900 so that we're on 1900 when I build everything. And we're going to keep the date speed paused. But I'm going to go ahead and set it to on. So the simulation is now running, which is kind of cool because uh, one of these things, there's our bear, is moving now. And uh, so one of the things that's neat about this map editor is you can actually use the simulation engine to help you create things. So let's check out the primary tools and then I'll show you what that means. So these three tools on the left are all generation tools. This one is called height map, this one towns and industries, this one main connections. If we look at the height map, this is where that seed is used. This is basically what you would get if you just generated a map at random and played a game. This is using that seed that I typed in. So for this example, I like a lot of trees, so I'm going to bump the forests up to the max. Uh, I don't like this extra little waterway there. I'm going to bump the water down by one, which will just give me a river running through the middle. And I'll keep the hilliness the same for this. I could bump it up, and basically it gives you more mountains. I mean, that's as expected for the seed. You never get truly flat, but if you bump the hilliness all the way down, you get a fairly flat map with just a few hills. So we'll put, keep it right in the middle here. Keep height map basically means that if I've already done some manual editing, I can generate over top of it, which is interesting. You, so you can combine your own manual terrain edits with a generated map. So if you click on this Keep Assets button, you notice it's not generating any trees or rocks, just the hillside. Turn it back off, and it'll regenerate the trees and such. There's two other keys on here. Uh, there's Import, where you can import your own height maps, and Export, where you can export the height map that the game generates. I'm not going to go into those options this time. So let's go ahead and generate this. And basically what happens, and I can scroll around or even close this window while it's doing it, is it's now generating that. The next button is called Towns and Industries. And we see a picture of our map, and we see these little symbols here for towns. We can also click on Keep Existing Towns, so that if I already made towns, it won't wipe them out. So you can dial this slider around. You can see it's going to put more or less towns in. We'll just do four towns to start off with. And we'll go ahead and hit Generate. So we'll do the same thing with industries. With industries, you can do two all the way up to 51 on this map. I'm not going to generate any industries with this tool. I'm going to put my industries in manually for this example. So let's close this. The next one is called Main Connections. And this is going to connect the cities that you have together. 
we can hit the default button and this is what the game wants to do with these connections so we basically have one main road going through now I can drag my own connections for example I can click on here go over to here and drag that connection make a new connection you can right click to turn off the connection tool I can also try to get it to put in a new bridge so I can make this connection now in this version anyway if the game can't figure out how to get around a hill it won't but remember this is an alpha version this is really not ready for release yet I've just been lucky enough to get a preview view of it to make this video so let's hit generate and see what the game does so how many bridges did we get we did get this bridge over here so we got a connection this free bridges you can't argue with that and here's the second bridge way down here by uh, Columbia let's do some of the manual editing here so I've, I've covered the three automated tools so here's your manual tool so the first one here is basically roads and before I show that I wanted to show how I'm gonna use it so let's take New Haven here So these cities are all randomly generated if you click on New Haven you'll notice that we have 239 residents the target population is 242 so it's not going to grow much but there's this little button over here called editor so these are the base numbers for land use if I want New Haven to grow I can change these numbers the max you can put in here is 800 so I can do 800 800 800 and now we go to overview the target population is now 1119 if I speed up the simulation here, and remember I'm not moving and I'm still in the map editor, if I speed up the simulation you can see the city is going to start to grow and it's going to grow fairly rapidly because it wants to get now to over a thousand residents. If I pause the game I can put in my own streets. So let's go to the car is the street editor. So you can edit the cities like you want them. I'll just slap in some streets pretty quickly here just as an example etc. I'll put in these streets and then uh, start the simulation up again and it's going to rapidly fill in this space we see it's 303, 309, it's rapidly expanding there's that, now let's show manual city placement so let's go over here to this next button, this is how you manually place towns I'm gonna manually place a huge town you have the commercial demand and then the industrial demand uh, random tools, food, goods random construction material machines fuel this is how you set demand for cities I'm gonna leave it at random you have this little circle button here and I think uh, right over here let's say next to the river is a good spot for a big town so let's hit the button right here and you can see it draws out the initial city there's Baton Rouge and we what I'll do now is I'll do the same thing I'll click on it and I'll say well what's our target population 279 well that's their idea of huge my idea of huge of course is to max all these numbers out so there you go and immediately the city will start building the target is now 1100 people and you can watch it grow again there's one other thing that I thought might be neat here uh, with this map editor let's say you wanted to make uh, a suburb of a city or you wanted to simulate a mostly residential suburb you can do that you can place a city and let's make it Let's make it fairly small to start out with. Let's put it right over here. It's going to give it a name, but you can rename it. So uh, Kansas City, not exactly what we want right next door. But if I click on Kansas City, I can say, you know what? I'm going to go over to the editor and I'm going to say, I want this to be mostly residential. So let's put 800 residential, but let's drop commercial to the minimum numbers. 50 is the minimum for commercial and 50 is the minimum for industrial. You can't go below 50. So Kansas City, or if I want to rename this to, uh, let's just call it Burb, okay? Burb is going to be mostly a residential neighborhood. There you go. And now let's connect up some streets using our manual street tool, right? And then we get some traffic in between there. And again, uh, both of these will start growing fairly rapidly. And at any time, you can save the map and then go into the game and start playing. You uh, save the map like this, and it's a special type of save file, so we'll enter a save file, for example. And now we've got it saved, and this is our tutorial map that we, that we can start the game in. So now that we looked at that, let's put in a few industries. 
So this is the uh, industry tab. You can use the wheel to scroll back and forth, which is pretty convenient. The name of the industry is showing up right above the word industry here. This is a farm, a food processing plant. We can put a farm in. So I'll just put it in like so. There we go. And then you get the idea, right? You place the industries as you want them. This is awful convenient. The M and the N keys rotate, uh, just like in Transport Fever. The comma and period keys raise it up and down. So we'll put in the food processing plant right there. I'll put in one more uh, industry for this example. We'll do a quarry. Put it in just like that. Close this window. There's a lot more detail to these industries as well. You get uh, conveyor belts. This almost looks like they're taken off the side of this mountain, right? But uh, you get little details like this going on, which is pretty darn cool. You can also switch over the terrain tools, which is this button right here. And let me, I'm gonna use the smooth and uh, just smooth out this area right here, just a couple clicks to smooth it out so it doesn't look like uh, it was manually placed. So that fixes that issue. And so now is a good time to show all the terrain tools. And the terrain tools are much like you would expect. We have a smooth, a flatten, the raise, the lower, and then we have the height map texture tool, which is really the main tool that I'm going to recommend using because this tool is really nice. But let's start out with the raise tool, and then I'll show you why we're going to want to use the height, height map texture tool. So raise terrain is pretty simple. It raises terrain. This is something you might want to do if you're going to make small corrections. The problem with the just raised terrain tool is it's hard to make something look natural. Even if you drag around a lot here, it's a very fast tool to use, but you end up with just these generic bumps and it doesn't look very natural. So how can you get something that looks natural? Well, you can use the height map texture tool. And then you have all these height maps to choose from. Desert has a very unique look to it. So let's pick desert first. That's the default. I'm always keeping the brush in this mode where it fades to the side. I don't really know why you'd use these other modes because they're so sharp, it's hard to get anything to look natural. So I'm going to use this brush. I'm going to increase the brush size. The strength, I'm going to increase the strength a little bit. Strength is basically how fast it does it. Uh, and the rotation, especially with these tools, you may want to vary the rotation to vary up the looks of it. But now you can see when I use this tool, because it's going from a height map, it's real easy just to go in here and instead of getting a smooth bump, I get these natural looking hills because it's using a height map. It's really easy to make natural looking hills. So that was desert. Let me use tropical, which is a lot more sharper. And when I use tropical, you can see that as I go over here and do this, that it's going to make a much sharper hillside. Uh, noise is interesting too. There's a couple of noise uh, selections here for height maps. The noise basically is a fairly random pattern. So in other words, you may get up, you may get down here. And then if you move it around, um, you're basically going to get noise. Okay. And, uh, you know, like for instance here, that looks pretty good. This might be something you want to do if you're trying to make uh, just small hillsides or a more natural looking rough shape. That looks pretty darn good. That does not. Um, if you go low enough, you get water in there. So we'll go ahead and use the smooth tool, which works as you would expect. And we will smooth that right out. Or we could use the flatten tool and completely wipe it out. Now I'm on a hillside here, so that's not really what I want to do. Let's go back to the smooth tool and uh, smooth this stuff out. But all in all, uh, with just a couple of clicks, you can't even tell I've been here. Okay, it looks looks pretty darn good. Now let's go over the paint tools. And the paint tools basically just allow you to paint different textures on the ground. So if I wanted the top of this hillside to be rocky, well, I'll just paint it rocky. There we go. Snow. Yeah. How about browner rocks? Okay. And uh, again, here is another texture. That's pretty rough looking. Okay, so those are your painting tools. And then you have assets. Assets, of course, is where the tree gun is going to live. This is the erase asset with the brush tool. There, we can erase these trees and rocks and such. And uh, let's set the brush size to pretty darn big. And we're erasing everything. Look, we've erased all these trees. I can also filter this list by using these buttons. These are all rocks. These are all assets. In this case, we have a, 
lamp, a fence, and a bench. I'm not going to use these in the editor. Uh, let's go back to the trees. The very last selection is the random trees. Place random trees with the brush. We'll do that. We'll set the brush size really large. We'll set the strength very high. We'll keep the rotation the same. And then we are basically can plant our forests on our hillsides here. And uh, they look pretty darn good. Now, if I didn't want random trees, of course, I can just plant a particular type of tree, etc., etc. All the tools you would expect in a map editor. Uh, and this one is pretty darn neat. I've covered the road, the town, and the industry tool. I've covered the terrain tools. Right now, the only game setting you can change here is the difficulty. You actually can set the difficulty in the map. And then you have your bulldozer tool where you can wipe out cities and I believe you can wipe out individual elements like this tree here. There you go with the familiar bulldozer sound. I can wipe out that bridge if I wanted the roads. So now let's take a look at one more cool item and that is we'll stare at New Haven here. Now I've set the simulation to 1900. What if instead I wanted to build out a city in the year 2000? I'll just change to the year 2000. And as soon as I accept that, you can see now the simulation is saying, okay, I've got to tear down a lot of these old buildings and build more modern buildings. And it's doing that. And you can see the modern buildings going up. Let's build a new city to show this as an example. Let's select our city tool. And uh, we'll make another huge city here, random and random. We'll put it down here. So because we're in the year 2000, this is going to be a modern city. And there it is, Los Angeles. So here's Los Angeles, and so I'll do the same thing I did with the other test towns, is I'll go in here and I'll say, you know what, 200's not nearly big enough. We're going to make these 800, 800, and 800, and go. And now you'll see the city start to rapidly expand. It's no city skyline. Look at that skyscraper going up over there. So to end this, uh, let's see how this is going to look in game. So I've set it to the year 2000. Everybody's upgrading here. Let's go ahead and save this as a map. We'll save the map as tutorial 2 and then we'll go into game and we'll start a game using this map. So I'm back on the main menu here. We're going to do a free game. One of the cool things about new game is that it'll show you the map that you're going to play before you even get into the game. So basically you can change your seed right here and see what kind of map you're going to play. Well, we're not going to do that. We're going to go in and hit the play map button. And here's our tutorial 2 map that was saved. And there's a picture of it right here. That's pretty cool. It's got a nice picture of uh, one of the cities that's building up. So anyway, let's go ahead and start this map. So here we are in game. It's paused. January 1st, 2000. I have the date speed, so the date speed defaults to pause. I could start it moving again, but uh, I'm going to keep it paused so we stay at, at, uh, in January 1st, 2000. Uh, I know right away I'm going to be staying in the Steam Age, most likely. But for this example, uh, this is what we have, and we're in game and we're ready to build. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this quick look at the map editor. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like. If you have any questions about the map editor, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. And that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you later.